well, I already said this informally 10 minutes ago. Younger students who are getting into crystal engineering now are very, very lucky people. Because the number of problems, the number of... Firstly, I was mentioning this in a lecture course in Bologna yesterday. Uh, there are jobs in industry, for sure. With the kind of experience and background that crystal engineering gives you, I like to call it as an umbrella discipline. It makes you, it's like the physical organic chemistry of 50, 60 years ago. It makes a student unusually adaptive and responsive to things that industry wants. It's a very problem solving kind of discipline. So, if you do a PhD in crystal engineering or do a postdoc in crystal engineering, the ease of you getting employment is, is very high. That's the first. The second is that the way in which the subject is, is growing today, I've given you five applications. There is something for everyone. Now, I came to crystal engineering uh, from organic chemistry. There are people who have come in from inorganic chemistry, clustered compounds. There are people who are outright physical chemists, both of the experimental and the computational type who have come into crystal engineering. So, and then there are people from material science background, you know, solid state chemistry, crystallography. So depending on your particular original training, you bring in a new aspect into research and crystal engineering. And that's what makes the subject always dynamic and always capable of adaptability and growth. So I would say that, you know, follow your heart and mind when you are getting into this subject, but basically you are a lucky person to be in this particular subject.